name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to part two on how to balance a central heating system. So today in this video, carrying on from Mondays, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and fully balance the heating system connected to this boiler. Okay, so this boiler is an Ariston ERP boiler, so it's got an ERP pump. So the first thing we need to do is we need to check the system and have a walk around and see what we've got. So, let's get on with it. Now, before we get cracking on this video, please could you take some time to subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. Remember, mainly Mondays and Wednesdays. Now let's get back to Derek and uh, get on with the video then. So, as I said, this is the boiler we're using. And there's the ERP pump. So this is the first radiator on the circuit. And if we follow the pipe work up, we've got this boiler here, which I'm going to have to isolate so it doesn't take an easy route. It then goes through the wall there. It then comes across here, feeds another boiler, which I'll have to isolate. Goes across another boiler, which I need to isolate comes down and feeds the radiator there and there's another radiator there the pipe work comes across here another boiler I need to isolate it then goes through the wall there so if we go back around so comes through there feeds the two radiators here and comes goes here and then there's one in the ladies toilets there and there's one in the gents toilets there and if you look the pipe work continues across through the wall there because it feeds these two over here which are going to have to be disconnected so i'm going to isolate these boilers make sure all the radiators now are fully open and uh Let's get on with it. And the temperature we're starting off with this morning is 14 degrees. And if we have a look at my watch, it says it's six degrees in Ashton. So that's what we're starting off with. So I've walked around and turned everything on as you've seen. So let's have a quick look at the setup, what I've done to see how we're gonna monitor this system. Now I'm quite lucky here. I've got about 10, 12 analyzers to be able to do this. So I've set a few up, so let's have a walk around and see what I've done. So got my blue laser ST set up on my flow return temperatures for the boiler. And you can see it's uh, slightly reading a difference because I've just tested the boiler. What I've done is I've overrode the stat and I've set the boiler when we turn it on to 50 degrees. So we're going to try the 50 degree flow temperature first. I've got my... Anton set up on this first radiator. So this is the first one off the system. And the last radiator on the system, I've set my cane up. So that's on the flow and return of the rad. So let's get on with it and get this testing done. Now let's get the boiler turned on. So like I said, what I've done is I've overrode the thermostat so that doesn't kick in and adjust us. We've got all the radiator valves, so thermostatic rad valves are all on five, so they'll stay open. All the lock shields are open. I have not adjusted this boiler at all. So its output on central heating is 22 kilowatts. It's 28 on the hot water, but we're not interested in that. Now, when it does finally come on, what I've done is... I've set this to 50 degrees like I say and you'll see there so it's on 50 degrees now one of the problems with this boiler is that doesn't change it shows you what you've set it to but doesn't show you what the boiler's actually reading so that's why this is going to come in handy so it does show you though that it's not got into full fire it's down at the bottom because we've set it at 50 degrees now I have got weather comp for this as well so that's been disconnected so there's no weather comp on it so that's not going to come into play so this is just solely as if we've got a time clock on the boiler no room start 
all the radiator valves are fully open, so the thermostatic rad valves, the lock shield valves, but we've set the boiler flow temperature to 50. So let's see how we go on. Let's leave it for 10 minutes and uh, see what happens. So, see you in 10. Now, boiler's been going and uh, for uh, 10 minutes or so. It's actually still showing the same on the screen, so like I say, it doesn't change, but it's slightly gone quieter with the fan speed. So you can see we've got a flow temperature of 44.4 so and 40 on the return. If we go to our first radiator, it shows I think we've got 48 and 47. Okay, and if I shine my little thermostat in the centre of the rad, you can see it's reading 50.3. Anyway, <laughs> that's the first rad. We go across now to the second rad. Let's see what this one's reading. That one's reading 52. Go along to the next one in the, in the center of the rad. That's reading 47. Go around to the next two. Go in the centre of the rad. That one's reading 49. We go to this one. That one's reading 49, 48, nearly 49. We go into the ladies' toilets first because that's the next one that comes across and it feels cold in here. And that one's only reading 18. Let's feel the pipe work. So it's lukewarm on the flow and the return coming into the rad. So uh, the, the, the radiator is pretty lukewarm, just lukewarm. Going to the gents. Ooh, it's even colder in here. That one's reading 13, chest of pipe, freezing cold. So this one is not getting any heat now at all because all the radiator valves are open. So uh, let's uh, see what we can do about that then. Let me just try and explain what's going on here. Uh, sorry for the crudity of the drawing, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to follow it. So this is our boiler and this was our first radiator, what we've got in the kitchen. And then these are the ones on the back wall, these are the ones in the hallway, and then these are in the gents and ladies' toilets. So that's my drawing. So what's happening is, the pump inside the boiler, because it's an ERP pump, first of all starts delivering the water around the system. So it's sending most of the water and the heat to the first radiator, because the valves are completely open. It's then sending them over to these two, then to these, and so on. But what's happening is, you can see from the temperatures we're getting, by the time it gets to this one, the water is kind of short circuit into that one, and missing out these two, because the return temperature is getting too high, so the pump is slowing down. Remember the pumps are burner linked, so the pressure going up and the temperature going up, you could hear the modulation going down and the pump speed going down. So there's not enough energy then getting to these two radiators because the pump has modulated all the way down. If this was a standard efficiency pump, then we probably wouldn't be getting the problems what we're getting with these two radiators. So hopefully that's explained quickly why the heat's getting to these three radiators and these are kind of okay and then these two are struggling. It's all because the valves are fully open and the return water is coming back from this one. So this one's overheating, this one's massively oversized for the room, so that's what's causing the system not to work correctly. So this is what we've now got to try and eliminate. So let's go and find out how we're going to do that then. So now we can see we've got two radiators struggling at the far end, or the last bit of the run that are not working. So what we're going to do first is, 
we've got now a flow of 44 and a return of 40. What we're going to do now is I'm going to do what a lot of engineers do is start the first radiator and I'm going to crank it all the way down and I'm going to turn it open a quarter of a turn then I'm going to go to the next one and turn it, up, uh, turn it open half a turn and then three quarters and then a turn and I'm going to see if that makes any difference to uh, getting that last radiator working. So let's have a go at that then. So the first one on the system, which we're now saying we've got 46 and 45, so it's pretty much going straight the way through. I'm going to turn it because this is a wheel head and a lock shield. All the way off. So that's all the way off and I'm going to turn it quarter of a turn. So that's quarter of a turn. But remember, not all... Um, lock shield or wheel head valves are exactly the same so this is going to be interesting because these are all different and see what happens so that one we've done a quarter of a turn let's go and do the rest of them so this is a troublesome valve I'm going to leave this one fully open okay so this is the last one I've uh, got to we've still not got anything coming through here yet and we're still it's 15.3 degrees this radiator and we've still got no inkling of any water coming here. Now the biggest problem we've got now is ERP pumps. So what's happened now is because we've only got it set at 50 degrees and because our return temperature is getting close to the 50 degrees the pump has slowed down so it's now not got the energy to get here. So uh, I don't think this will ever get hot. So what I'm going to do now is the good old trial, uh, tried and tested method of going around turning all the thermostat valves off except this one and let's see if the energy of the pump then will get it to here. So let's give that a go. So what I've done now is I've turned all the valves off and I've just heard can you hear it? The water to start moving around this system. And this is just starting to get warm now on this flow pipe. And the top of the radiator is starting to get warm. It's now reading 40 degrees. So going around now turning all the um, TRVs off has allowed this to start coming through. Well, we'll leave it for 10 and let's see what happens. So this one's been running a while now. It's been pretty hot now. And we've got a temperature of 49 degrees at the radiator. So that's worked. So if you do get a radiator, but you're struggling to work, Close all the others down and just allow the pump to get the water to that one radiator. And it works a treat. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to open all the thermostatic rad valves back up again. And let's see what temperature difference we do get across these radiators. Doing it kind of the rule of thumb way a lot of gas engineers do. So this heating system now has been on an hour since I got that rad going. So we have, according to here, a flow temperature of 42, a return temperature of 38. So this is in condensing mode all the time. It's uh, some three bars at the bottom. So what we're going to do now is, I'm going to have a look at all the radiators and go around and see where they're at. Because it's been on an hour now. So let's go and have a look at that. So this is the first radiator. Remember we only turned that one open a quarter of a turn. So let's have a look and see what the analyzer says. It says 38 and 39, so it's pretty much going straight the way through. Let's see what the radiator temperature is. So that's reading 42.1. Let's go and try the next one. So that one's reading 42, so pretty much the same. Go to the next one. So again, that one's reading pretty much 42, that's 43. Let's see what the room temperature is in here. So it's saying 19 degrees. 
That does feel quite nice in here. And reading 44. Go to this one. See what the analyzer's reading. So it says 46, 47. This one's reading 44. Let's go into the gents, see what that one's reading. And it does feel cooler in here. So that one's reading 28. So, hmm, it's still got a good flow on, but I think some air has got into this radiator, so we need to see if we can if it needs bleeding because the pipes feel pretty hot and it feels quite warm at the bottom, so a bit of air's got to that. Where is it at the bottom? <laughs> yeah, you can see the massive difference there. So 28 at the top. Thirty-nine at the bottom, so that's got some air in that rad. <laughs> Let's go across to the next one. So this one feels warmer, and that's thirty-nine. So that's what the radiators are reading at the moment. So let's see if it does need bleeding. Oh yeah. Let's see if it gets hot. Now, it's finally hit 21 degrees in that room where the uh, thermostat, it's not a thermostat, it's just can register the, the um, temperature, the thermometer. So we've got a flow of 46.4 and a return of 40. We're still on this 50, so that's pretty much what we're gonna get with the uh, 50 degrees on the flow temperature. So let's do a last whip around the system now and see what the radiators come out at before we now up the temperature to, I, might, I think we might as well go to 70 degrees and we'll see what comes out there. So again, the first radiator, we've got 39.42. Check the radiator, it's saying 46.47, 46. Let's go and check the other ones. That one's reading 47. Let's check the room stat. change to 21 so there you go it's 21 let's check this rad 46 nearly 47 so they're pretty much all the same let's go and check the others RT8 on that one see what the analyzer is reading on this Can't read it because it's in the way. So 49.50. 47 on that one. Let's check the gents. Not a million miles on that one. Let's check the ladies. Again, not a million miles off from that one. Now, from the experiment so far, you can see setting the flow temperature at 50 degrees on the boiler and reducing these valves. It's kind of kept the radiators all at the same temperature going through, but we didn't get this delta T temperatures across the radiator or the boiler, and it did take about an hour to get the room up to 21 degrees. So let's uh, try a little bit more now and see um, what we can find out. But so far, we're not reaching this delta T, but 
we're not going massively over temperature in the house so we should be saving energy now just turned it all off now so I'm gonna let it all cool down so I'm then gonna increase the temperature do I do 60 or do I do 70 I'll tell you what, I'll try 60 first and I'm going to see then if I can balance the delta T across the radiators. So we see if we can get 20? <laughs> I doubt it. We're probably going to get this between 10 and 12 degrees going across the radiators. But I'm going to leave it for half an hour now to all cool down and then we'll have another go. Yeah, and we'll increase, we'll increase it to 60 degrees rather than 70. So, see you in a bit. So, everything's cooled down now. <laughs> We've got a flow temperature of 20 and a return of 24. That actually feels right though. <laughs> the flow, flow is colder than the return. So I'm going to turn it back on. I've actually got the room temperature down to 19 degrees now. I should say the room temperature's gone down to 19 degrees now. So now we're going to increase the flow temperature to 60 degrees and see what we actually come up with. So we've now got 60 degrees and it's uh, already sounds like it's fired up a lot more with the, with the um, fan speed. So now what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and use my Anton now at this first radiator and see if I can balance it by using this uh, lock, well, wheel head valve on the return to see if I can get this delta T across the radiator is what we're looking for. Heating systems are designed for this 20 degrees across, but we'll be lucky if we get 10. So let's uh, have a look at that. Now we're at this first rad again. Now remember, this is the one what's only cranked open a quarter of a turn. So we've already got an actual um, delta T here. We've got a flow of 46 and a return of 40 at the moment, but our radiator temperature is 54.6. So what I'm going to try and do now is, <laughs> oh it's changed again now, it's 46 to 41. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank that down a little bit, so we're going to turn it back an eighth of a turn. <laughs> so I'm just going to go a little bit and see if that makes any difference and we get any difference in the temperatures of the rad so let's say the rad is 54.6 or so and we've got a 46 and a 41 flow return so let's see leave it for a few minutes and see if that makes any difference so we've left it for a few minutes now and uh, 46 and 40. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit more and see if that makes any difference. The rad temperature now is 53 and dropping. We've got 52.9, 53. We've got 45 and 40 now. So 40 on the floor, what have we got on the boiler? Uh, we've got 54 and 48 on the boiler, so we haven't got anything going across there neither. Well, we've got 5 degree difference. But we're still lower than the 50, only just. And the boiler has just started to ramp down again because that return temperature started to get up. Now it's going to get to a point now where I'm virtually turning this rad off. So we're virtually all the way down and it doesn't seem to be making much difference in the delta T but actually making a difference in the temperature of the rad. So we're at 51.4 now <coughs> with a flow temperature of 44 and a return temperature of 38 and a delta T of 6. We've actually gained a delta T by increasing the flow temperature. This will probably just prove that we heat up a lot quicker. Obvious reasons. So we're now on 
4.48 on the flow and return, so we've got a delta T of 6 on the boiler. And remember, I didn't adjust the kilowatt output of that boiler. I think when the trainees work it out, it's, a, it's about 9 kilowatts, something like that, 8 or 9 kilowatts. So we're getting to the point now where I'm turning this off a little bit more. And we've still got this delta T of 5. So let's have a walk round and see what difference this has made now to the other radiators. And I'm going to try and adjust a few of the others and see what we get. So we can see this radiator, this first one is 42 and 38. So if we check the temperature, we can see the radiator's now 47. Let's go and check the others. So the temperature of this is 54. Remember, I haven't adjusted this one and it's properly warmer in here already. So this is the one what was adjusted to half turn. Let's go and see what the room temperature shot up to. Oh, so it's already 21 in here. And we've got 55 on this radiator. So let's go and see what the others are. This one's 58, 59, 58. <coughs> let's see what the analyzer is reading. So it's reading 61 and 58. So let's see what this is reading. So that's reading 58. Let's see what the gents lose are. So that one's 57 and it feels nice and warm in here. Ladies. It's proper warm in here now. <laughs> that one's 55. So the warm up is a lot quicker now, obviously. So the second radiator, this is the best I could get. Eight or nine degrees and I've virtually turned off the valve so it's throttled all the way back. So that's the best I can get with that one. So the best I can get the third one is this six degrees. And again, I've had to virtually turn the valve off to get a delta T. So third one, oh, it's gone up to seven. So on these two, that one, I'm getting 54.50, so a three degree difference. And again, I've throttled it right the way back. And this one, we're getting 59.53, so we're getting a five degree difference. So let's see what the toilets come out at. So the last two, this is the gents toilet. So remember this one is still fully open. I've left this one fully open because I don't want to strangle the pump. And that's just, yeah. <laughs> Go to the last one. This is the ladies. And yeah, pretty much again. So let's try and sum up this. Now, what have we gained from this experiment? It's now a quarter past three. I started this at eight o'clock this morning. Granted, I had about half an hour for my dinner, but, oh my word, how long out and drawn out was that? So, what we've kind of, or hopefully what we have got from this is, first of all, a central eating system is useless without a room stat. 
because the temperature just goes up and up and up and up and you're wasting heat. So if your central heating system hasn't got a some kind of room start, you're just wasting so much energy. The next thing is we'll hope we found out is this flow temperature is the key. So the main keys are the flow temperature, the lower we can get it, the more efficient it can be. Weather comp, that's massive. Why are we not fitting weather comp to every boiler? Okay. Actually range rating the boiler as well on its heating. Now I've had loads of comments on my video on which is the best boiler uh, for 2020 and they're all saying you don't need to do all that rubbish because boilers modulate and we've just proven that the boilers modulate down but not enough without being controlled by a room smart room start so ebus mbus or whatever you want to call it open therm if you've got your room stat linked to the boiler, that is going to make a massive difference, along with weather comp. Now one of the things we have worked out is, if that radiator isn't working, <laughs> we can close all the thermostatic rad valves on the other radiators and we can get that one to work. Trying to balance across the system to get a delta T without working out the size of your radiators first is pretty damn impossible. Most of the radiators we had up there were twice the size of what was required. So we were always going to struggle to get a Delta T across them. Including the boiler. We did actually get some Delta T, but not what we expect to. Now again, this isn't in a house. So these radiators are oversized to try and get rid of some of the heat when they're doing assessments. So hopefully that has shown that the radiator sizing makes a massive difference actually sizing the radiator to the outside temperature and the outside temperature being a big um, issue as well so <laughs> we're none the wiser well I'm none the wiser anyway all right like I say it's not been done in a house so uh, that's one thing um, the, and the radiators aren't sized for the house so that's kind of messed up this whole thing anyway but hopefully it has shown that keep your flow temperature down have a room stat, have controls have weather comp and we are going to get these boilers to work as efficiently as we can I've proven that this rule of thumb what engineers do just like the quarter of a turn half a turn does nothing does absolutely nothing because unless you know how big the uh, the actual hole is going to be on the on the lock shield because like i say some of them you do a quarter of a turn it's fully open so but there are some special valves out there now what are self-regulating and, and they will um, reduce the flow rate but again they're dead expensive so um, <laughs> so yeah this half an hour 35 minute video has proven hopefully proven that how important your flow temperature is your radiator sizing a room stat basically a room stat which is either e-bus M bus or open firm so it gets that boiler in regulating right the way down because if you don't your room temperature is going to go massively over okay so you're wasting energy so <laughs> anyway if you want me to continue with this and try and get to some I could try it at my own house actually um, do another video on seeing if we can actually get this Delta T then put it in the comments down below but I bet there won't be many <laughs> so if you've liked this video why don't you give me a thumbs up or leave a comment down below if you think I've done it all wrong then let me know if you think I've just wasted your life 
don't bother, don't put a comment, just move on. <laughs> and um, where was I get up to? So yeah, leave a constructive comment down below. If you're not subscribed to our channel, then subscribe because I have got over 6,000 subscribers now. So thank you very much to everybody you subscribed. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because YouTube will tell you uh, when we're releasing videos, which is mainly Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.